What's good team? Welcome to another Small James coding tutorial where today we're going to be talking about promises. What are they? How do they work? And what are the best practices for handling them in JavaScript? And to learn about these promises, we're going to be planning a wedding and using wedding invitations as an analogy for JavaScript promises. And so for this demonstration here, I have a JavaScript script so that we can execute using Node.js. And basically it has one asynchronous main function where we can write some asynchronous code. And at the bottom, this just executes this main function. Now up the top, we have a send wedding invitation. And now this is not an asynchronous function. And this is analogous to any asynchronous call that you could ever want to make. So that might be a sleep function, that might be an API call, maybe you're fetching data from a particular site or you're sending a network request to your backend infrastructure. All of these are asynchronous calls that have indeterminate response times. Now the issue with these asynchronous calls is that if we're writing synchronous code or sequential code, so when you type out a line, the next line gets executed and then the next line gets executed, we can't determine how long it's going to take to receive this information. And so when we create an asynchronous call, it's initially stored as a promise. And so a promise represents a promise of information or a promise of action. So in this particular case, a JavaScript promise is similar to a wedding invitation because when we send out a wedding invitation, when we execute an asynchronous call in, in JavaScript, when we fetch data from an API or send a network request, all of these things, we can't determine how long it's going to take to get that response back, to fulfill that promise of information. And so when we send out the wedding invitation or when we make that network request, we don't know how long it's going to take to get a response back or an answer. Now this is an issue because if we're planning a wedding, let's say we have 50 invitations to send out and we need to know what dietary requirements everybody has, if we don't have their responses that dictate which dietary requirement they may or may not have, then the rest of our planning is nullified until we have that information. Now, in this particular example, if we're writing sequential code, so one line after the next, let's say we have const diets equals send wedding invite, and we just call this. Now, send wedding invite is currently a sleep function that will sleep for anywhere between three and five seconds, but it's just random as to what that is. It's similar to a networking request has an indeterminate time or response time. Now in this particular case, if I console.log diets, just like that, and execute this code, we can see that I console.log a promise. And we also note that my code took approximately four or five seconds to finish. So that just shows that we're saving this as a promise of information until it's resolved. Now, if I wanted to have a variable that said number of veggie meals is equal to something dependent on diets, so like diets times two or something, we have an issue because currently we don't have that information or that response back. And so what do we do? You know, it's just saved as a promise of information. And so the rest of our wedding planning turns to custard because we can't continue. And so we can use this async await syntax to await a promise. And this just means that our code pauses. So inside of this asynchronous function block, any awaits, we pause at this until the promise is fulfilled or resolved. And then the information or the response from that networker request or whatever it is, the diet information is set to the variable that we assign it. And then we move on to the next thing. So now if I await this, if we run this code again, we can see that we await for an indeterminate period of time. And then we get undefined because there's no actual response, but no longer do we console.log the promise because we don't move on from the promise until it's resolved. So the promise is resolved, fulfilled, and the information is assigned we know what the guests want to eat. Now, the async await is a great way to handle promises. And you know, there's also the dot then syntax. So instead of using this, you could write dot then and do something with that. But the dot then syntax is kind of antiquated. So it's good to familiarize yourself with the async await syntax. Now, the question becomes, what else can we do in terms of handling these promises? So if we just write const diets two is equal to await send wedding invite, this code will still run sequentially. And so everything will work and we will still resolve all of our prom 
promises sequentially so that we're never dealing with any promises they're all fulfilled before we move on however now this situation is analogous to sending one wedding invite waiting for a person to respond and us to have their response before we send out the second wedding invite now if we're planning a wedding that's going to take ages you know if we have 50 people to invite and the average person takes a week to respond suddenly that's a whole year of wedding invitations and we can use the term in series to describe this kind of behavior so we're sending out these requests or these api calls in series so we send one out we wait for it to be fulfilled until we move on to the next one now this is not necessarily the most efficient way to resolve promises instead what we can do is we can remove the await syntax and so now if i console.log diets and diets2 we should see that neither of them get resolved but we instantly will console.log two promises and we can see that that works just here and our code takes approximately you know six to ten seconds to resolve now what we can do instead is resolve them in parallel so this would be analogous to sending out all of our wedding invitations and waiting for them all to come back before we move on and we can achieve that in our code by saying const all diets is equal to promise capital p dot all and we pass it an array of all of our promises or we could say you know we expect responses from these 10 people coming to our wedding so now we can have diets and diets too and so now if i console dot log all diets we should see that we get two promises and then we wait a period of time and then we'll console.log all diets just like that but we can see it didn't actually work we can see that instead we got a third promise just here and that's because i forgot the all important await syntax so we want to await for all promises to be resolved before moving on to the next line before planning all of our foods for our wedding so now we run we get those first two promises we await all of our promises to be resolved we get two undefined or if you're making a network request what you'd get back is all of your data in an array for each individual promise so you would get an array of all of the dietary requirements or the acceptance of the wedding invitations and now we can see that we can carry on with our code sequentially and we've resolved all of our promises in parallel and it will take approximately half the time of resolving them all in series or one after the other now the last way that we can actually improve upon this again is by saying all settled and now what that's going to do is it will give us objects containing our data so similar to the current method except it will also give us the status of the promise so if we're sending out a network request and we get and we make a bad request and we get back a 403 or a failed response or any of that kind of information or maybe we can't contact the server now what happens is when we run this code we send them all out together but for every invitation that we don't get back or we fail to get back or comes back with invalid data we'll get a status assigned and a value so in this particular case the value would be what was in the array in this original case so it would be the dietary requirements or the acceptance to the wedding but now we also get a fulfilled meaning that our network request or our asynchronous call with an indeterminate response time was successfully resolved and it allows for better error handling of all of your promises that you're sending out simultaneously so this is how the pros would handle a lot of promises or a lot of asynchronous calls that you're sending out because it's just not efficient to have them all executing in series best to send them all out at the same time or as close to the same time as is realistically possible and then just wait for all of your responses to come in before moving on to the next section of code anyway i hope that helps clarify what javascript promises are if you've enjoyed the video please like and sub and comment down below what you'd like me to do next and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace